Welcome to another Empires and Puzzles Books interview video. I would like to thank the community for the incredibly positive response that you've had to this series. This has been really a joy and a gift to be able to have the opportunity to interview some of these top players in the game. Uh, we do have another uh, excellent player in this interview, and uh, you know, hopefully this doesn't end anytime soon, but we have a couple other great players that are going to be coming up. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Get the notifications when these interviews are coming out because we're learning some serious tips and tricks from these people. I'm excited to learn about the war teams from the player we're going to be talking to today. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into the interview. And as always, I will follow it up with some battle videos between uh, this player and myself. Enjoy. All right, everyone. Welcome to the fifth interview of the Empires and Puzzles Books interview series. I am Empires and Puzzles Books, also known as Jekyll and Hyde. And uh, we have a very special guest here. I guess it, that's almost redundant to say because they've all been pretty special guests. Uh, but we have Colonel Indiana Longnuts uh, with us. He also has his YouTube channel, so we can plug that. If you've not seen his channel, I, I encourage you to watch it. I think some I get the vibe from his viewers that they like that he's, he plays his videos on a fast speed so you can watch an entire war in 10 minutes instead of the, the 25, 30 minutes that mine take, I guess. So, Colonel Indiana Longnuts, let's start there. What's with the screen name? What's the history behind that? It's actually a name from uh, Impractical Jokers. They used it in one of their bits, and uh, I love it. Uh, my name used to just be Corey in the game, and uh, I changed it one day, wanted it to be different like everybody else, and uh, said it to Colonel Indiana Longnuts. It stuck, and I've never <laughs> looked back. Yeah, it's funny. I, I was asking my wife, I'm like, is that a character from a book? Like, I know that's something, and I Googled it, and the only thing I could find was some of the uh, Impractical Joker videos, and I assumed yeah. that they were making a joke on something else. But they're no. the originators. They are. So they yeah. started it and you've made it famous. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Yeah, in the game, definitely. Is there a Colonel Indiana Longnuts? <laughs> <laughs> does, does anyone here have the rank of Colonel? Sir, Colonel Longnuts? Not yet. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about your history in the game. How long have you been playing? Started playing May of 2019. I got a really late jump compared to most of these guys. Uh, season two was already out uh, completely by the time I started playing. Um, so I got a really late jump. So have a lot of making up to do, but I think I've caught up to everybody. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I was in the same boat. I started actually January of 19. So I have a few months on you, but hence yeah. the uh, encouragement I've always given for XP farming to try to catch up. But like yeah. you, I, I think we've caught up. Uh, you're obviously a, a pay-to-play player as well. And that, like anything in life, I guess money buys some advantages. And some of that is time in the game. Yeah, for although, sure. Although, regardless of what people say, we still can't buy wins. No, nope. no, you can't. Still got to have the heroes. Still got to have the troops. Still got to have everything. But, yeah, you got to buy them. So who is your first five-star hero? My first five stars, so I was uh, free to play for about three months or so, and then uh, I did a 10 pull, and I pulled Athena off of uh, one of the Atlantic summons, and I also got Seashat. She was the hero of the month at that time, uh, so I got those together, and they, uh, they really hooked me into the game, Seashat, more than Athena. Uh, with her minion and everything, she was one of the first at the time to have a minion, which is really cool in the game. And uh, I I stayed with her, and uh, then I maxed Athena, but Justice was actually my first hero I ever maxed. I got uh, Justice out of the elemental summon, believe it or not. I, I pulled her, <laughs> really wanted a yellow, so I pulled in the yellow summon, and I got a Justice, and I maxed the Justice just because I had darts before I had anything else, and I wanted a five-star maxed. Right. I understand that feeling. Uh, yeah. Funny enough, my, my first five-star pool is still not maxed and I have <laughs> the costume. It's Quintus. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough one now to, to max. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I've been fortunate with dark, so he's, he's just always been bypassed. My first maxed five-star was actually Mitsuko and I use her every single day, especially with the, the Scatties and Finleys of the world, Vila's, they yeah. just take care of themselves with Mitsuko. So she is priceless. Yeah, she has still never pulled a Mitsuko. Can't get really? Her. Oh, wow. She's okay. she's important. Oh yeah, definitely. With the ninja so, troop, not as much these days. There's there's ways around her, but uh, still uh, really really good. 
So what is um, what is your your total now of five stars? Do you have an idea how many you have maxed? I think I got 55. I, I had 50. Uh, I had 49. And then I got the six season four five stars from last month, and I maxed all of those and emblemed them all up to 20. So I think I'm at 55 right now. Yeah, I've uh, had the honor of fighting your all season four team with a team power of 4882. That's yeah. a little on the obscene side. So I'm looking at your team here. You got uh, Phileas Fogg, the professor, uh, Elizabeth, Dr. Mm -hmm. Moreau, and Akarag, who I have yet to pull. Um, actually, I don't have Lindenberg either. I don't, the professor, I don't have either of the holies. I got everybody else from season four. Did you manage to get Lepiota? Uh, Lepiota? Yeah, I maxed her. So I switched that defense up between. Uh, Usually I run a Moreau tank with Akarog and Lindenbrock, um, or I run a Lindenbrock tank with uh, Lepiota and um, uh, Moreau on the wing. But um, yeah, I have all six of them maxed. The only one I don't have currently is the green one. They came out this month, but uh, I can't pull myself to pull for one hero in that portal right now. Yeah, I can understand that. I, I did find in season three that if I chase the weekend that they're featured, you have that significant increase in percentage chance and then every weekend after that it goes down because the the, the number of heroes available for that same summons rate is diminished yeah. but i i actually was fortunate i got guard jamel in my first i did 330 pulls and grabbed guard jamel and nice. then yeah uh, yesterday i uh, was still looking for the holy heroes and i pulled a second guard jamel and she is a beast, both visually yeah. and in her attack capabilities. Looks so how, like she yeah, the uh, yeah, and fighting your your uh, season four team, there's a psychological effect with the underwild tiles that come on the board, uh, and especially if you are a mono player, as I have tended to be, uh, that really can be so destructive because I'm forced to look at tiles that I probably don't necessarily want to chase or I sit there getting picked away at just like a minion. Right. So kudos to you on that. Uh, and kudos to getting them all leveled and maxed. So you, you obviously made some tough choices. So let, let's be honest for a minute. Who, who did you raid for emblems? Who did? Um, so for Akarog, I stripped Sea shat uh, Sea shats building back up. She's to like six right now. <laughs> that that one hurt a lot. Uh, that, that was my most painful one. Um, so for Lindenbrock, I stripped Vivica, which didn't hurt me because they're both slow yellow healers. She mm -hmm. stayed in the same war spot and uh, she gets a, a three tile bonus just off the rip from the beginning. So that one didn't really hurt me too much. Uh, as far as my fighter emblems for fog, I stripped tear, which killed me. Um, I love tear. I know most people don't like tear, but tier, I love tier. there's a video on my YouTube of, of tier against four people. My <laughs> whole team that except tier. And I took out the whole rest of their team. It was a 4,700 team. Yep. So tier can do some amazing, amazing things. Absolutely. Uh, so I stripped him for fog. Um, as far as Lepiota's emblems go, I stripped uh, a Sabina, I stripped a uh, Skittle Skull, and I stripped an Almer. And I'm bu building my uh, Skittle Skull back up. Uh, he's an awesome, or she's an awesome four-star hero mm -hmm. for the event. Um, so that's where Lepiota's came from. Moreau, I stripped uh, Clarissa for. So that was just uh, straight purple for purple paladins. Um, uh, Elizabeth, I stripped Santa for. Um, so... She can also do the same thing Santa does, you know, pretty well in the Rush Wars. She's not Santa, doesn't have the emblems, but provides, you know, the fiends a and uh, also a mana slow and a little bit of a hit to the other team. So that's where I got the emblems. A lot of them were really painful, but. Uh, Always tough choices. Cool. Always tough choices. So now as best as we know as a community, as far as documentation of records go, our understanding is you hold the record for the highest trophy count at 3,346. Yeah. Now, yeah. My, my understanding was back in the day in the first year or so when they first started with the trophies, they had a different counting mechanism. So there may be cards out there that have a higher trophy count. So when we're saying that 
you have the record we're talking about under the current current being the last two to three years, not that first year of how they count trophies. So right. that that in itself is impressive. But when you consider that there's a number, a significant number of players that have a two year head start on you. Uh, and I assume you didn't get this record last week. How long ago did you set this? Um, I want to say that was like August of 2020, somewhere right around there. Um, it was during the middle of the Teleria meta. Um, so everybody had green tanks. Teleria, Heimdall was starting. And uh, my attack team was just really, really strong. I was using um, uh, Puss in Boots, uh, Mother North, Heimdall, Tear, and also Gravemaker. And... I use that team a lot before a lot of them are stripped and moved around into different teams now. Um, but that was my team that any Teleria team was really, really uh, had no shot against. If you gave me two red matches, I, I could pretty much guarantee you a win. Um, it was just a really strong team and I was raiding. I ran out of opponents. I sat online for a little bit, waiting for people to log off. As soon as they logged off, you know, it hit that five minute mark. I would raid them, mm -hmm. get my, you know, nine trophies or so. <laughs> and uh, yep. zero came along and revenged me for like 61 trophies. I've never yep. seen so many on a revenge <laughs> hit me for like 61 trophies. So thanks, zero. He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we all do to each other, I suppose. Yeah, yeah I, I, I broke 3,300 once, and it was actually the last day, the last Sunday of the beta testing for the raid formations. Yeah. And, and that morning, I just realized that my, my nature team is a nine-tile killer team. As long as I got nine tiles before anything significant happens, I win. Right. And what was going on with those raid formations, there were all these players that were doing uh, double or double reverse with Sif in the middle or like a Krampus and I have yeah. the Hatter. So I would just steal what they put out every time and just reflect exactly. it back to them. And uh, I, I literally lost one raid, one offensive raid that entire day. And I lost very few because I was using the reverse defense, which I think is the hardest to fight. So that was uh, that was an interesting day. I don't expect to see 3,300 cups again anytime soon. <laughs> No, especially with this new meta with the purple, the bears and the Freyas, it's going to be really tough. I've gotten back up to about 3270 with that meta mm -hmm. um, and, and I end up losing. There's no solid team like there was against Teluria. If Barra goes off and you're not ready for her, uh, it, it can be a real uphill climb. So it's, it's not as easy as it's going to as it was before. All right. So let's talk a little bit. You know, we're talking about the the two year deficit on, on the long time players and somewhere near you also made ground with your troops. So let's talk about troops. What, what has been your strategy with troops uh, across all levels? Are you leveling uh, the twos and threes or are you four stars only? And, and, you know, just go ahead and what, what, what's your strategy? So from the beginning, I was always pushed to level troops. So um, the first, troops I ever leveled were actually the critical troops, not the mana troops. Um, there were no ninja troops out back then. Um, so I actually had a full defense of level 30 mana uh, critical troops by the time I was like level 45 or 50. Um, as soon as I started playing the game and I started spending a little bit of money in the game, I started doing 10 pulls here and there. I wouldn't have the food for them right away. So I'd let them sit. And as soon as I had food every day, you just keep feeding. If it's one, at one hero, or one troop for every troop that you're feeding every day, it, it really adds up. So um, I started doing that. I got my level 30 crit troops and I was good and I was done and I wasn't ever going to pull troops again. And um, I, I got to uh, seven days till payday. I don't think that Alliance is around anymore. Um, and they really pushed mana troops. And when they said that I had a, a set of level 11 mana troops just for my very fast heroes. And it was really just for the guardian Jackal. He was really all I had at the time. And um, so I brought those level 11 mana troops up and I ended up bringing those up to 30. And then I'm like, wow, this is really nice. You put this on an average hero and instead of needing four matches to get 10 tiles, you just need three matches. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to bring another set of mana troops up. So at that point, I have a critical set. I have two mana sets maxed. So a fast hero, even a fast hero, requiring a level 29 troop 
you know, saving a tile. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the ninjas came out and I'm like, wow, they have a really high attack. They're 32% maxed compared to the mana troop at 26% and the critical troop at 20%. So um, I'm almost done working on a set of ninja troops. I have the green and the purple um, to 29 where I'm stopping on them. I'm not bringing them to 30 for the extra healing percentage. Um, but the other threes are just a level of two away. So I'm going to have a set of ninja troops maxed. And what that lets me do um, in wars, Mother North always gets a critical troop. She requires 12 tiles. She's slow. She doesn't get any kind of boost. Um, and it's a grind sometimes to get it. But most of the time, if you put that mana troop on her and you save a tile and you get her down to 11 tiles, that doesn't make a big difference. First off, um, you're most likely not going to get those 11 tiles exactly and waste that special. But she's dead by the time if you don't have a critical troop on her. So uh, a lot of the slow healers, Heimdall, the same thing. I, I run a, a critical troop on him for war. Um, but any average heroes that need 10 tiles, they're going to get a mana troop. So they go down to nine tiles. Very fast heroes, the same thing. If you can get them to fire in six tiles, you know, you can ghost one set of tiles and you're done and you, you can fire them again. Um, so now the ninja troops I started working in in the last month or so because uh, I felt like they were sufficient to go into war. And uh, with the 32, 31, 32% attack on them, I put them on people like Costume June. I put them on Liana. She hits 512% at like 890 with the emblems. So I put a, a ninja troop on her also. Um, I actually use Frigg with a ninja troop in war um, because she's fast. And on that same team is Tarlac and um, uh, Caitlyn's costume. So they both need mana troops. Um, so I run a ninja on her and she hits really hard. Uh, so troops are the biggest thing that people, you know, haven't really paid attention to. Not that they go unnoticed, but if you have troops and you have all different types of troops for different heroes, um, when you're building a team to fight against somebody, you have the advantage right there. Um, number one with the attack and defense boosts, but they're just faster. So you can get your tiles off faster. You don't give them a chance to get any of their specials off and damage you at all. Uh, so troops are one of the most important things in the game. Yeah, and I think what I think a point that gets lost sometimes on players is the reusability of troops. You know, in war, we can't reuse a hero, but we can reuse that troop. So if if you're fighting a team that has green tanks and you're throwing in a lot of red heroes, that maxed red troop can be in every single fight. Uh, and on some levels, I think troops are more valuable than emblems, depending on what you're doing with them and how you're using them. Uh, they, re they really are because uh, troops, you know, you uh, personally, I use the same six teams for war and four of them are based on green um green teams. I, I run three, two. And so I use those green troops. Say I, I didn't have any other troops except green troops. I can use those same troops on all four of those teams and be set. So troops are really, really super important. Even two and three stars for the tournaments. I started working on them. I have, I'm almost done with my second set of two star troops and my second set of three star troops. Only yellow is the one I'm done with on three star, um, yellow, but, um, I'm going to have three of those and uh, of each of those. That way I run three, two, I'm going to have three max sets of troops, always, you know, having a max troop on everybody. It, it just makes your team that much more powerful. Yep, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, another place that this gets lost, I think is a frustration that people have when they try to go mono. I have a video say no to mono. And that's one of the reasons, because a lot of people try to fight mono, but don't have troops. I mean, it's, you know, cause you've built three sets it's hard to get to five sets. I mean, it's a huge investment uh, and it makes you incredibly weak if you don't have that troop support to uh, be able to pull it off. Um, what about your two stars? Did you max any of those for three star events? Yeah. So for my two star troops, I have uh, one set done. Uh, the second sets at around 11, um, 11 to 12, they're working. All they get are one star feeders. So um, 
they don't get anything big. They get bumped 40 at a time. So all of my one-star feeders go to my two-star troops and uh, they're going to work up to 15. I have one set at 15, the other set, they're, they're like 11 to 12 right now, and they're going to get maxed. And then I'm going to do a third set to 15. And they're all just going to be off of one star feeders. Um, as far as my three star feeders go, I'm almost done with my second set on there. They get all of the two star feeders. Uh, so any two star feeders I get from maps or uh, summon tokens, they go straight to the three star troops. And I'm almost done with my second set there. The second set's at like 17 to 18. Yellow's done. And the third one's actually at 12. I get an incredible amount of two-star yellow troops. So my third starts at, at 12 on my third troop. Um, but the others are finishing up their second. They're at 17, 18 or so. And then I'll complete a third set of those. That way in the tournaments, I, I'm always having max troops on everybody, whether it's a defense troop or whether it's an attack troop you know, for the hero. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I've used the same logic. Now I will, if I start on a, a new four star troop, I will use some ones and twos as feeders on the first levels is because they're so cheap and they can get some ground, but I get to a point where I'm just using the higher level troops to, to max the higher level. And then just like you said, one stars to feed the two and two stars to feed the three. Now with the insane amount of farming that I do, I get an enormous amount I, I quite literally, without exaggeration, have thousands and thousands of one star troops. So mm -hmm. I've maxed, I actually have, this is ridiculous, but for two stars, for the three star events, I have five attack troops maxed in each color for mono <laughs> and, and two defense troops maxed in each color. So I have seven maxed. But That's it's really it's it's kind of insane it's kind of ridiculous but it like you said if you're just feeding the ones and you do a few every day it actually it's kind of in the background and, and you just sort of get there that you end up with having a maxed and again it does make a big difference you can take those extra hits or get that extra strength when you're going into a fight yeah. uh, the place where i have my deficit is three stars uh i've i, I jump from the uh, the three star troops i jump from two maxing the two star troops up to playing major league mono level catch up on five stars. So my three star troops are weak. I just got my fires to where I want them to be because fire is the most important for the challenge events for, for uh, the Epic level. Mm -hmm. All right. So you referenced your war teams. Let's jump in and talk about those. I'm going to lead you through the, the slides that I have in order that you sent. Thanks for giving me those in advance. So you yeah. are a three, two player. Have you ever strayed from three, two, or you've been solid three, two the whole time. Ever since I started playing, um, I started rainbow and uh, you know, and I was low level, I played rainbow, obviously, unless you have the right team for rainbow, you're going to get demolished. So um, my Alliance, they helped me build some three, two teams and um, I've been three, two, I strayed for one war, uh, try to try and prove a point to one of my uh, Alliance mates. And I said, you know, mono you can't do anything you know I'm, I'm a solid 250 260 points and more every every week if i go mono i'm gonna get 150 so i let them pick the team uh that i would hit and i also let them pick the color and um i i ended up uh i think getting 250 on the war uh, <laughs> was the most nerve-wracking thing ever my heart was pounding as soon as the board opened up and i had like three tiles scattered um, I, I'm like, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to lose this battle. We're, we're going to lose the war because I'm messing around here. And, uh, you know, I got a couple diamonds, the board flipped and, uh, I ended up winning them. They were by hairs, but they, they were so nerve wracking. Um, the, the tile damage is amazing. Don't get me wrong that mm -hmm. you can't, you can't beat mono tile damage. If you can, you know, hit 800 to a thousand on one tile or something yep. like that. You can't you can't beat that. But uh, with three, two, um, you're usually not enough power to kill one hero with your three powerful tiles that are against them. Um, so it, it takes thinking. Um, it, it's different. Both. You know, everybody has something different. I have good friends that play mono and all they do is play mono. I have friends that play three, two. I've converted someone from three, two. I've converted <laughs> someone to mono because they hated three, so much. So. To each their own, they both work. Uh, there are different ways of playing the board. Uh, from my understanding with it, I haven't played it too much, but mono, it seems like if you get the colors off the board that you don't need, uh, then you have a lot of your colors and you can combo them and catch some combos and catch some real tile power. Um, it's different with three, two, but they both work. 
Yeah, that's it. As a mono player, I've noticed. Um, I used to always say that for a mono player, if you, again, if you have the troop support and you have the emblem support, we used to have, I would say, four to five moves to flip a bad board to get some of our tiles. Barra and Freya have changed that because within two or three moves, you already got minions that are starting to wear at you and you need to get some tiles to try to take out the minions if you don't have the specials up. So that yeah. has been shortened by a move or two, which has made it significantly more stressful on on a on a mono player. I can't imagine anybody playing mono without troop support right now, because I know my troops have bumbled me through some bad openings and frankly have failed some bad openings. All right, so let's go in and decipher your war teams. The first one I have up, uh, I'll just go by tank. I assume that you probably know what the rest of the team is. So it's the Phileas Fog. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll walk other, us through the team. That's uh, that's my Mother North team. And uh, so Mother North, she has a critical troop on her. She requires 12 tiles. Um, she's emblem for defense and health. She's there. She's not providing tile power very low. She's like 650. Um, but she is my favorite hero in the game. Um, I've been down to many of a battle that uh, it was just Mother North at like 100 HP. Uh, I fire her up. She brings everybody back. I, I fire a green diamond. I get her going again. And, you know, my whole team is resurrected and it's, you know, it's a second life. Um, so Mother North has the ability to do what Albie and Heimdall do, but at a much higher level. Um, so I love Mother North. That's my Mother North team. It's a green based team. Um, there's Phileas Fogg, there's Francine, and uh, right now I have Gravemaker and Elizabeth on there. So I have two season four heroes on there. Uh, so I get a little bit of a bonus for spawning a gem when they spawn. Um, but pretty much Gravemaker, he's a six tile. Uh, he'll burn you down. Everybody knows what Gravemaker is. He's one of the best in the game. Uh, Elizabeth, she provides a mana decrease to everybody. And if they don't have a healer, um, they're just going to wither away slowly. Uh, those fiends are only 50 to 60 a hit, but uh, they wear on you really quick. And uh, after five turns, they've taken 300 from you and uh, you're crippled. Uh, so with Mother North keeping you alive, Phileas Fogg provides a debuff. Um, and also a elemental defense down. So if I have somebody that I really, really need to kill, I can hit them with fog and then Francine and uh, Francine provides a cleanse for me. Also, that's a pretty well-rounded team with a healer, a debuffer, a cleanser. Um, it's a little light as far as healers. I usually like to run two healers. I, uh, my whole life I've run two healers on every team. Um, but I'm, recently got away from that i'm going a little more aggressive on these teams so i'm i'm uh getting some healers out of there and getting a little more attack power uh with these harder teams now um especially with the berries and the furriers you got to have a way to kill these minions or they're going to kill you and even healing um they prevent minions from barra uh she prevents you from spawning minions the freya's minions are just so hard to kill you they'll, they'll kill your minions first so um, i'm going a little bit more attack power now that we're basing our uh attack teams on purple tanks um, but i'm still not going really yellow strong because i feel a lot of my teams are best off with different colors than yellow um, they're still good to kill purple tanks but um, the the yellows i just have inferior heroes compared to my other colors right now uh, you know what and i agree with that logic anyway with the bear and freas I, I don't value killing them quickly i kind of i, I value trying to moderate their mana or excuse me, their minion building. But if you kill them right away and you lose the mana that you built up, that can be crippling, you know, yeah. and you mentioned something that I find frustrating that you mentioned as a positive, uh, which is the season four tiles. Uh, I think they're excellent on defense, but I find them frustrating on offense because when we get them, it's a tile color that we have because we have that hero. So we got to make that decision by between keeping it on the board or trying to match it. Uh, I would really be excited if the season four heroes matched the weak or strong tile to the hero when you're on offense so that it's a tile you're probably not using, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath that, that they'll make that change. Probably not. No. All right. So team two, uh, this is the one I'm guessing if you're starting from the left, you're calling it your Tarlac team. Mm -hmm. So uh, that team is, um, it doesn't really have any snipers or many 
you know, what you would call a, a real hitter. Um, that team is based on survivability. Tarlac is uh, a healer and he increases your damage, um, what up, by 100%. And uh, so if you get Tarlac off and you throw any green or blue tiles on that team, they're doing major damage. Um, but my main focus is to get the greens going. So I have Caitlyn costume, I have Frigg, and I have Tarlac. Um, always fire Frigg first and then Caitlyn costume for the defense down and then the hit. Um, and then Tarlac and anything that's left over after those greens are fired, Tarlac is just ripping through. Um, I know most people don't use Tarlac in war um, and only on Titans, but I've had some insane experiences with Tarlac where I, I'm down to just him and I'll fire greens and blues and it rips through four of their heroes and just destroys their whole team. Um, so that Tarlac buff is just insane. Um, he's got that spot locked. He'll, he'll never be taken out of there. Um, I have Ariel there. Uh, Ariel's a cleanser and a healer. And uh, also on that team is Finley. Uh, Finley is there for buffs. So I try and target that team to a Freya and someone that's hitting everybody also. So uh, if you have a kill hair or even someone that hits just three, I try and take them against them because of Caitlyn's dodge. I try and get those minions going from there. Mm -hmm. um, but Frigg gets the um, the ninja troop on there uh, because she hits very hard. She's at 32% increase with that troop. And uh, if there's a lot of green tile, she can do major damage. And uh, the tile damage on that team is crazy. Uh, Tarlac's at 923, I believe. Um, Frigg is at 880. And Caitlyn's only at 793. But I actually went full attack on her costume. Um so that, that has some serious tile damage. If you get Tarlac going and you throw a green tile, it's usually doing about 800. I've seen it do up to 1,400 on one tile against the nice hero. Um, so that team is solid. It's one of my most solid teams, uh, even though it's a really, really weird put together team, but it's very survivable between Ariel and Caitlyn costume. Yeah, and I like that you have the redundancy of defense down. You have it from both Frigg and Finley. So mm -hmm. that's another nice feature. Uh, and Ariel uh, also has the mana boost, which is helpful. Yeah, with Ariel on that team, if I get um, three ghosted tiles on Finley or three ghosted tiles on Caitlyn, um, they become very fast when Ariel's active. So you only need six tiles for either of them with that mana troop on them. So it makes it just a beautiful team. All right. And here we are. We do have Lepiota. So your Professor Lindenberg. Dr. Moreau, this is actually all season four, except for June. June. Yeah. He's the outlier that, uh, so that's professor that's June. That's Akarag Lepiota. And, uh, who do I have there? Dr. Moreau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, Lepiota is a really, really cool hero. Um, she's one of my favorite season fours. They're all really awesome. Um, but Lepiota, she can take anybody out of the equation for a few turns she provides a little bit of damage while they're out and um she can be a game changer um so if you have someone like krampus or a black knight that's about to fire and steal that taunt and you have all those guys about to go off you fire her take her out of the equation get some of these guys dead let krampus fire and then you know he has one person by him you're fine um the, the team is a little um, dependent on getting Lyndon Brock off. She only requires nine tiles her first time. I, I give her the uh, mana troop. So she, she goes from 10 to nine tiles because she gets a 25% or 20% increase at the beginning of the, of the battle. So if she fires, I can most likely choose a team that uh, provides a lot of ailments. So if she fires one time, those healing will go to the end of the battle, whether it's a uh, frig team or grave maker or a veil up providing water damage. If you fire Lindenbrock one time and those heroes get another ailment, it causes that to refresh and she gets, they get that uh, exact hero gets four more turns of healing. So that's one of the great things about Lindenbrock. She's slow. But uh, one time going off can be all you need for the rest of the battle. If you get her off again, it's just an increased bonus, and you're probably winning that. 
Um, but that's a really, really fun team. Um, you've got Moreau, who's going to be there to provide a blind and also hit three. Uh, Akarag, uh, I don't know what to say about this one. I, I've already done it, and I've emblemed him, and I've taken them away from c -Shet. I, I don't know what's going on with him. He's supposed to hit up to three. I've never seen him hit three. He hits two every time. He'll rearrange the whole formation and then hit the person on the edge of the formation and hit two. Um, I've used him for about three or four wars now, and I've never seen him hit more than two people. Wow. Uh, but he's a cool special. He has a 910 attack, um, so the tile damage is very nice. Um, all of those season four attacks are very nice. I believe Lindenbrock's at about 820. Lepiota's in the 870s, and so is Moreau. Um and Akarag at 9-10. So it's a really high tile power team. The only cleanser I have or healer I have is Lindenbrock. So it's either my tiles are there. I'm going to have to make some moves very quickly and try and restart that board. Um, but it's a pretty solid team. It's got four season four heroes. So um, they get uh, a lot of tiles on that board. Each of those tiles does 50 or 60 damage. So um, if you're down to one person, you have four tiles on that board. Those between uh, the tiles, you're just going to eat them away. Throw sure. some tiles at them and let those um, little Ronic tiles, whatever they call them, um, eat them away. And it's just like bear as minions. You watch those go down so fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't realize all that about Professor Lindenbrock because, like I said, I don't have her, so I, I don't overly explore heroes until I, I get to play with them a bit. So that's pretty interesting about the reset. Let me yeah. up. I had one of the most incredible end games I've ever had the other day, and I wish I would have recorded it because I got down to Lepiota only against three heroes, but one of them was ghosted already. And I was able to negotiate tiles to get her back up to mana while putting killer tiles under the hero that was the enemy that was ghosted. So I ghosted the second hero, repeated that process. I ended up because you can't ghost the last hero, but right. if you but you can ghost the last hero if the other two are ghosted. So mm -hmm. I actually had them all ghosted. And as they came alive, I had tiles under them that just popped them with tiles. Yeah. Uh, it was, I, I thought for sure I had it lost because she did not have much health left. So sh she's, I think in some ways a clutch hero like tier is that you can just pull a win out from, or mother North where you, it's certain devastation, but you can just pull it back. She's one of those weird niche heroes. Like, I'm biting my tongue comparing her to Proteus, but she's kind of like Proteus where she just takes those Proteus is three, but she takes that one hero and she eliminates them for what four turns or so. And she does a little bit of damage to them each turn. So she's like a single five-star Proteus type, um, but she's super fun to play with. I, I never mm -hmm. had hell. Um, so she's as close as I've ever gotten to someone like hell, but completely taking someone out of a battle for four turns. Um, Many people are overlooking her, thinking she's not one of the better season four heroes, but um, she really is. I think she's a gem. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, so we got your next team up, which is very fast with Cage Barato up to slow with Heimdall. Yeah, that's uh, another green team. That's um, so Heimdall that has uh, Zeline in it, that has Liana in it. Um, Liana gets the ninja troop. Um, her hit is absolutely insane. So if you have a uh, Heimdall fired up and you fire Liana, it's, it's uh, doing some incredible damage. Um, but I also have Freya on that team and I have who else cages on that team. Yep. Cage and Freya. Yep. Cage team. So Freya is there to provide some minions, a little bit of added health and um, some defense and cage is there for a dispeller. Um, He's emblemed up attack path, so he puts a hurting on somebody. Uh, he hits really hard. Um, and then Zeline's there for a backup debuffer or um, just to reduce uh, a little bit of their attack. That team um, with Heimdall at slow, um, he takes a little while to get going. So I put Zeline in there and I put Freya in there to give him time. Heimdall's not a true reviver like Mother North is. Um, if you have Heimdall revive, it's really surprising, actually. I, I've been there where he's revived all four, and I'm absolutely shocked. Um, but he's a great healer. He overheals by 500, you know, mm -hmm. 600 mana troop on it. Uh, so he's, he's really, really great. He's slow, um, but I'm not afraid to use slow heroes in more. 
um, if their abilities warrant it. Um, so that's a good team. It's a, it's a attack up team, defense up team, a debuff team, uh, their attack down team. So it's a pretty well-rounded team. Mm-hmm. One of my more successful teams. Yeah, I'm with you too. I, I don't think people should be fearful of slow heroes. Uh, and and I also agree with you about Heimdall not being a, a true reviver. To be honest, when I attack a Heimdall team and he revives somebody, I'm always shocked. Like every time I'm like, wait, how did they come back? I'm like, oh wait, that's right. He does do that. <laughs> like I, like I one- you know, it's like Mother North or Albi become a target. You want to try to get rid of them right away. And I just, I am very lazy about killing Heimdall. I'm like, I can get to him when I get to him. And then he revives somebody. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's not supposed <laughs> to happen. You're, yeah. you're not reliable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very rare he ever does. But uh, when he does, it's beauty. All right. Now, come on. Uh, using a slow here on attack team is one thing. But come on. Al Freak and a war attack team. Very slow. Talk to us about the team. So that team, um, I recently switched Freya and Alfreich. Um, so Alfreich used to be on that team with Heimdall. Uh, recently, I switched and I took Freya out of there and I put Alfreich in. What that team right there, Team 5, is a boomer bust team, as boomer bust as it gets. It has a costume regard. It has a Wilbur. It has um, Vanda. It has Kill Hair. And it now has Alf Reich in it. Now, here is the theory behind this team. It's, um, it's purple strong. So if I get three purples, I can automatically fire um, my Rigard and kill here. I got them going. If I get two red matches, I got Vanda going. Now, kill here is downfall. And the whole reason why you know, she has such a high attack is because of her downfall is because she provides your whole team with negative defense. So my goal on this team is if in order I get them, it's, it's a boom. Um, you get Rigard and Wilbur going, you get Vanda fired. Vanda's going to prevent any, um, any ailments to your team. So then you, you fire your kill hair and they resist the defense down with with Wilbur fire, giving them defense down with your regard costume fire, giving you attack up. It does a lot of damage. It does about 800 to each hero. Um, <laughs> Kill hair just does some stupid damage. Um, so I used to have Freya on that team just to provide them with a little bit of um, defense boost. Uh, Freya is needed for team four a little more. Um, so typically Alfreich doesn't make it off in this team because it's, it's one of my better teams, even though it's a really weird team and there's two four stars on it. It's a really reliable team. Wilbur's sharing the damage and increasing my defense. So it's very hard to kill anybody on that team. I typically don't take it against a debuffer, you know, Zelene or Cage or C-Shot, anybody like that, because it ruins my whole mojo. Um, but I, I take that team and it's really, really reliable. If I get to the point where I have Alfred charged, it's game. Um, so Wilbur and Wilbur provides me with defense up, uh, regard provides me with a little bit of a heal over time to keep my guys alive. And, uh, I mean, just last war, this, this, uh, Wednesday war, I was actually down to Alf Reich herself. Alf Reich went off, killed three of the four people and I killed the other with tiles and, uh, you know, it works. It's, it's a really odd team, but it works. Um, Vanda is one of the main components with uh, preventing the defense down um, because I need the defense up on that team. It's, it's, it's only a 45-20, I believe. So mm-hmm. it's, a really, it's a really low team power from what I play, 47 to 4,800 every other attack team. So that's my boomer bust. It's, uh, I'd say it's about an 85-15 boom, um, surprisingly, really. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm surprised. <laughs> but but kudos to you. I don't know that I'd want to walk into war with that group, but I can understand the logic behind it. Uh, and I do appreciate the use of four stars. Uh, I uh, do not use a lot of four stars in my in my my war teams, but between you and the last interview, seeing the four stars coming into play and being used. And I know I've obviously had a lot of Lions mates that uh, are, are infatuated with regard costume. Uh, I, I actually don't have regard costume max. I, I don't ever really use them other than during the four star events. Wow. I just, I don't know. I just, I'm not in love with them like everybody else is, but 
I I have my Rigard costume emblemed on the attack side, so he's like 750. Um, he doesn't have too great of a defense or health. Um, I believe he's 1300 health, 1350, and about a 780 defense. So he's not great. But he has like a 750 attack. Um, and he really provides a little bit of an attack power because I need tile power on that team. Kill here's, you know, she's 845. Um, and he's 750 and Alfred 700. So it's not really a great attack team. If you look at like my team two, where you have all of them around 900, that's a really low attack. So that team, um, it's just really based on survivability with Wilbur and Rigard and you get Vanda going, she's going to prevent a lot of things from happening to you, water damage or fire damage. You got to fire her at the right time. You got to have kill here ready within two turns. So you don't incur defense down. And I mean, if you get Alf right, it, you're done at that point. Um, sure, so sure. the, the four stars, they can come in really handy. Um, Rigard is the closest thing to uh, a five star that a four star gets. Mm -hmm. Now, your sixth team, I find really interesting. One, it has Puss in Boots, which I chased again and still missed. Uh, and you have that nice combination where Puss in Boots is going to pull up the minion for Queen of Hearts and give everybody taunt. So that's a nice trick. Uh, but you're also using a somewhat controversial hero on this team, and that's Thor. He's, I, I've argued since he was released that he's underrated. Uh, I think the community often puts too much emphasis on a hero's capability and defense which I never really understand because we don't even play our defense team. We just set it and other people get to play against it. I'm more interested in offense. Right. Uh, and I, I, I'm really curious to hear your experience. I have not, I, my Thor is max, but I have not emblem Thor and I've not been using him uh, just because my holy team's weak. I don't have uh, costume Leonidas for the elemental defense down and white rabbit only defense down one hero. So I, I always feel weak on my holies. So yeah. I have, I haven't embraced Thor in the level that I want to. So I want to hear about this team, but give, give me some feedback on Thor. Thor is um, completely underrated. People trash Thor. Uh, there's people in my Alliance that won't ascend Thor. And uh, they, they said they, rather wait for a better yellow i don't get it um i love thor i have a second thor at 370 uh who would be getting darts if i didn't pull odin last season three um thor is amazing so thor is at very fast speed any hero at very fast speed is off to a good start you look at cage you look at grave maker you know clarissa is a decent hero um but very fast heroes can be very good. Um, he hits one his first time and he blinds them and he hits them for about 280% damage, which is about 400. I have him emblemed on the attack path. Uh, I believe he's around 850. Hits one person for 400, 450. Not great. Blinds them. It's not great. That's at very fast. That's requiring six tiles with a mana troop. You get six more tiles. Now he's hitting three people. So... Now with six tiles, you're blind, you're hitting three people at 450 and you're blinding three people. Yeah, if that I can I was just gonna say if I can get uh, I'm always nerdy with my stats here on hit threes. I think this is a, a stat that people don't get. Like you said, the, the first hit is it's a little bit of a waffle, but it's very fast, so you can get that second charge in there. The only hit holy heroes that hit three harder than Thor are Norns. Sir Roosley, and that's if you didn't kill the tank, because then Sir Roosley's down to two. And Akarog, who, by your testimony, is more more often than not only hitting two. So mm -hmm. by that logic, you can almost eliminate Sir Roosley and Akarog. That means Norns is the only one hitting harder. Um, and it's they're both hitting at 280%. She's base stat is 770 to his 749. So it's not yeah. a huge difference, which is why I have always said that he's underrated. So... I appreciate you know, Nor that. Thumbs up on Thor. <laughs> yeah, Norns is not a bad hero either. Norns is not someone I would ever use to change the element or anything like that. So she doesn't fit me. I, I use her for Mythic Titans, but that's it. Um, but Thor, I mean, you get him going a third time, and he's blinding the whole team. He's hitting the whole team for 450. Um, it's just insane. So I have him paired with Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots increases attack. You have that attack up, you're hitting for 550. So I, I've seen snipers take tier, for example, tier 
hits for 450, 500, you know, not much more than that. It's no different than that. Tier's that fast. Thor is very fast. So on your first charge, you're, you're very similar to tier. On your second charge, you're hitting three. On your third charge, you're hitting five. Um, so at that point, he's a very fast justice. Mm-hmm. Um, justice is not a bad hero. Justice is slow. Um, but blinding five people, blinding your whole attack team, if you can't see, you can't kill anybody. So um, Thor is extremely underrated. So on that team, I have Puss in Boots. I have Queen of Hearts. I have Costume Marjana. I have Thor and I have Uraeus. Um, so it's a heavy minion team. And I take it against minions because I have Uraeus on that team. Um, so I, uh, my, my main goal is to get my reds going. Um, at three matches, you're going to fire up Puss in Boots. You're going to get your attack up. You're going to lower the elemental defense down with Marjana, and then you're going to hit them with Queen of Hearts. You're just going to have two uh, taunt minions at that point. And if you have a couple of specials ready to fire, you hold her, and then you wait for the specials to fire so they kill her taunt minion, and then you fire it again. Um, that's probably my most successful team right now um, with the yellows and going up against the purples. Um, but it's red strong. I'm not a fan of yellow heavy teams. I only have one, which is team three. Um, but I, I use the same attack teams no matter what the war is or, um, you know, what color tanks we're going up against. I feel each of the teams individually are, are capable of killing a 4,800 uh, no matter what the color is. Uh, every team has its different little niche where it should be taken like uh, against the debuffer. So this team should be taken against Krampus or this team should be taken against people that hit all. They're all built to take on different teams. So um, I'm patient during war. I, I find the right team, team five. If I can, you know, that team that's 4,500, if they go up against the healer tank. So if, if you go against a Kunshin tank or a Heimdall tank, you steal all the healing you know, it's even more of a boom on that team. So they're all, they're all designed for different reasons. Um, and they're all designed to do different things. As team six, I find somebody that has minions on it. I, I let the sand damage just do damage to, you know, the whole team using Uraeus. He bypasses all the minions. He causes damage. So you put that on a barrel or a Freya team and you're the whole battle. You're just, they're losing 140 health every time because you just keep putting sand damage on them. And all they can hit is your queen of hearts. So it's just a really, really uh, successful, good team. Queen of Hearts and uh, Bush should always be paired together. I appreciate you uh, sharing your war teams with us and your, your logic and, and usage. So for a last topic for us to address, you mentioned Norns you'd only use against Mythic Titans. So let's talk about Mythic Titans. How's, how's that event been going for you? Um, I love the Mythic Titans. They're one of my favorite events in the game. Um, I'm in Gypsy Danger, and we've taken top 10 every time. Um, it's really, really fun. I've made some videos for my alliance to help them, to show them what I do. Um, I put some videos on YouTube of my Mythic Titan hits, but um, you know, I gave some secrets to my alliance and everything. It's, it's really um, it's a super fun event. It's a, my main thing in the game is team events. So wars and Titans, that's what I really, really love. So mythic Titans are so much fun. Okay. We're going to pause the interview for just a moment so we can check out one of these monster mythic Titan hits from Colonel Indiana Longnuts. Enjoy the video.
we got 220 emblems or something like that from this last one. So you can't beat that. Rewards are amazing. Um, but, you know, I have personally finished top 10 on the total attacks, um, all five of the Titans. And um, they're super fun coming up with different teams. Uh, the first one was a little weird. I didn't know what to expect. So um, I took I took my Mickey in there for like six battles and she had a really low mana gen by the sixth battle and everything. But now I only take them for three fights each. So I use four dedicated teams. And, um, you know, besides this last one, which resisted defense and elemental defense, it's always huge attack boost, defense down, elemental defense down, you know, cap your boost with the, the Titan banners and, you know, have fun with hurricanes, NATOs and uh, use your scrolls they're just so much fun. They're super heavy on items and I'm completely depleted on items. <laughs> I didn't skip a couple of mythic Titans. Um, I I'm down to like three scrolls. Um, but they're super fun, uh, trying to get the biggest hit you can and, you know, watch your Alliance claw into that top 10. We finished fourth <laughs> last time. So nice. really congrats. Yeah. Thanks. I'm really proud of the whole Alliance. And, uh, that's the, that's the highest finish we've ever had. And, it's just super fun watching, you know, I have a bunch of friends in different alliances and uh, it's really cool to see um, what everybody does on them and how you compare because not everybody goes all out on every Titan. Um, we used to before Mythic Titans, uh, but now, now we save our items for these Mythic Titans. So it's fun to see when everybody goes all out where everybody stacks up. Sure, sure. Yeah, last month we were fifth. This month, as soon as we saw that there was no defense down, and it, it you know, logically, you know, everybody's in the same boat. But right. psychologically, you're used to doing X amount of damage. And when you're like half that, it's painful. Yeah. Uh, so we were 60 or something, which yeah. was pressing. Yeah, we just cruised uh, top 100. We decided to save some mats and, and hold it for next month. That's really. Uh, um, my big critique of the mythic Titans is that it's monthly. I, I think it's too resource heavy for event or for weapons that are too rare to get. Um, and e you know, even if everybody on your Alliance buys the mythic Titan deal, that only gets you through the first like wave or two. Um, well, you'll get, you'll get half the amount of scrolls and everything you need You get 30 or so, but you know, there's not enough skulls to go around from all these Titans to, restock monthly on it so now and it, if you're up yeah and i need and i know not it's not everybody's event but i'm a big fan of the ninja tower that's the most exciting event for me so i i need to barter on which event i'm using weapons uh and it's tough i would i would much prefer the pace if they alternated months with uh, the mythic titan and the ninja tower i just think they're way too heavy on the rarest weapons in the game yeah the ninja tower um I, I'm usually content with top 500. I see you up there, top 10. Every, I'm content with top 500. I don't. I, I prefer to save my match for the Mythic Titan. That's the event I love sure, more. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, we, we all got to make those choices, right? <laughs> yeah, you have to. You can't do everything. My fear with the Mythic Titan is that with the pace that it's on currently, I think it's going to diminish some of the competition because like you said, you have friends in other alliances and things. And depending on where alliances are, I, I don't believe that we can keep the pace and be competitive every month. Even if everybody didn't use their mats on anything, but the mythic Titan, they're going to start to get depleted. And as alliances start to take breaks, I think you're going to, I mean, maybe on some level it's nice because you'll see different people at the top, but you won't actually be competing against them. Uh, so I'll be I'll be curious how the long term economy of that event works. Uh, yeah, because it can't keep stocked up forever, you know. No, and the the, uh, the weapons even if you buy the weapons in the store on the daily, the hunter's lodge only comes through daily sales. You can't buy them anywhere else, and there's not a significant amount. I forget the scrolls if it's you can only buy one. I think one. And then the, the hurricanes, you can get four or five, uh, I think, on one shot. But that's once a month, you know, the cycle that's on, that's that's nothing. Uh, and, you know, we're obviously, and I'm sure you are, killing 14-star Titans every single day. Uh, but you only get so many slots for those Titan parts. And no matter how efficient you are, and you can't even go out and merc for Titan parts. Like, so... 
I've never been big into murking, but like we, we discussed going up to tier two the other day, which is 52 harpoons and just for two extra parts, it doesn't seem worth it. What if you get two of something you don't need, you know, if they were two skulls every time I'll throw 55 myself, but <laughs> you can't guarantee what it is. I need yep. skulls in the tails. You know, I, I need to make hurricanes. I need to make scrolls and I'm completely out. I have zero skulls right now. So yep, me too. I'm at a standstill. I can't do anything. It, uh, it, kills me every time I hit that scroll button during that mythic Titan. I'm like, I'm going closer to zero, but I, I went all out this last mythic Titan, this next one, I'm going to have to take a step back. I have no choice. Yeah. That's what, and that's what I'm saying that the long-term economy, the, the, the in-game ability to produce those weapons is just too limited. And now that there's two events, you know, I do applaud them for coming up with events where you can use them. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, I'm grateful that they're not available in the challenge events. I mean, the challenge events are already highly biased to the heavy pay to play players that can keep farming boards over and over. So to be able to keep farming boards and being able to use uh, heavy weapons, that would just make that nonsensical. Uh, yeah. But, you know, and I, and I don't know if you get this feedback too, but uh, people will see me use heavy weapons in the Ninja tower and the mythic Titan. They're like, Oh, that's such a waste of heavy weapon. I'm like, well, where else are we going to use them? Like, yeah, that's I'm not going to yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. There's nowhere else. Yeah, I'm not using them on a map. <laughs> so, but, uh, well, this has been great. Any any last words you want to end anybody, you know, end with the viewers? I just want to say thank you to everybody that requested. Uh, he does an interview with me. It's been an absolute blast. Hopefully you guys took away some, uh, you know, good things, learned a little bit. And uh, it was a whole lot of fun. And uh, subscribe to my channel, watch my videos, give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think and what you guys want to see. Um, I mostly do tournament videos and war videos, but let me know if there's something you guys want to see and I'll start making them. Sure. And I got your... Uh your your youtube channel posted above here and it's also down uh, below the video so people can click on there and, and go check you out there really appreciate your time and, and you sharing your wealth of knowledge uh these interviews obviously wouldn't be possible if people weren't willing to share some of the, the insider trips and tricks and tips that you all have learned it's been a pleasure thank you and uh we'll see you on the battlefield awesome thank you guys so i typically end the Empires and Puzzles books interview videos with an attack and revenge, which had already talked to Colonel Indiana Long Nuts that I had plenty of footage because he and I have attacked each other so many times. However, I woke up this morning from a message from him saying, hey, you were in my tower again last night. So he attacked me. So we'll do this pseudo live. At least it'll be the freshest attack since the interview. And he one-shot me. And this is his awful, awful Season 4 team with pure evilness. Forty-eight eighty-two. So he switched somebody out because I think it was forty-eight eighty-five. We got Lepiota there who is going to make somebody from my team disappear. Oh, let's see. Can always fight fire with fire. I think I will go with my mono dark, which also has Lepiota. In fact, let's give her a little more heart. All the emblems I have. Maybe that extra little heart will make a difference. All right, so Lepiota against Lepiota, Kunchen versus Professor. Of course, I'm mono dark, so if I get the tiles, I might be able to pop her right away. Little worried about Kunchen being slow against the spiders. At least he heals a lot when he does go. All right, we got some tiles under Lepiota. Well, let's see if we can stack underneath Lady Linderbuck. All right, 10% bonus for the combo. Ooh, bigger combo. All right. That helps. 
Let's just not set off his Lepiota. You know what? I didn't bring Jabberwock. All right, the biggest person to fear here is probably the spiders. All right, neutralize that awful threat. And next up, let's go with the professor. All right, this should be fairly easy clean at this point. And that will hopefully be enough turns to get more tiles. built for everybody else here. I have a feeling that I'm going to get attacked with fiends anyway. So I cannot ghost the last hero. This should be okay. I'll get the fiends, but that's game. Pleasure as always, Colonel Indiana. Now let's jump in and see your video that you was your original attack on me. All right, guys, found uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Here's the team I'm gonna use. And uh, got that ninja troop on June. And uh, let's see what we get. Pretty good uh, starting board, that's for sure. Try and, uh, oh, big combo. Let's try and take out uh, Freya here. Alright. And Frig's gonna fire. Try and just throw some tiles into her. Alright. Let's get the Professor and Uraeus and June going. Oh, it's a big... Oh, that's no good. Alright, Frig again. Let's heal up Mother North. Everybody, let's blind Finley. And let's kill Cobalt. Ghosts. All right, let's try and kill Finley here. Just down to Odin. That's all she wrote, Jekyll and Hyde. 